We're going to get going here. Um, so we have another first time DEF CON speaker. And so you know what that means, right? So please give a warm welcome to Pedro Cabrera, who's talking about SDR against smart TVs, URL and channel injection tax. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm Pedro Cabrera, the founder of my own company, is Chill, and I'm in love with the software defined radio as you are going to see in this presentation. I've uh, been uh, working a long time with uh, network mobile operators doing pen testing and uh, well, doing some kind of uh, security research and uh, also in love with drones and drone hijacking attacks. I love them. Ham radio and, and drone photography. I don't like to talk about me. I prefer to talk about this presentation. I divide five main uh, sections. I uh, would like to introduce you a little bit uh, the HPV TV uh, system and how we can receive digital television in our light box. Once we learn how to receive television, we will be able to move forward into the channel injection. We will transmit our own channel. We will play a little bit with the different uh, receiving stations, antenna facilities and so on, playing with the uh, attack's scope or impact. And finally, we will move towards the URL injection attack targeting the Smart TV browser, and of course, why not, conclusions. So, HPV TV uh, stands for Hybrid Broadband and Broadcast Television. It's like kind of thing we are every day hearing about uh, customized advertising. Televisions have been there for, since uh, 1940, and they are just uh, passive boxes that receive signals from the broadcast signal and make their magic turn into either video. But in 2009, whoop, thank you, sorry. European uh, came with a project, merging two existing projects, German and French project, to say, hey, why not make interaction, interactivity television so we can offer uh, customized advertising to the audience? And how they achieve this design? If you uh, take a look at the right of the screen, you will see a red bidirectional arrow because the smart TV receives from the broadcast signal an URL, a URL, sorry, and will send its uh, get uh, request to this web server. Nothing new, it's just a web server. But through this web page, it's called in the standard, it's called an application, television and web server will interact. So in that case, the audience uh, watching TV with their remote uh, able, able sorry, to interact with uh, the TV channel. And let me introduce you a very uh, generic, this is of course a simplification of a generic TV uh, network diagram. I want just to share with you the key elements. Generate the uh, content, it's uh, at the left. Think about reporters traveling with these bands with a huge satellite dish on top. They are transmitting uh, content of real time towards through an acquisition network to the main head end. They are receiving content from TV studios, reporters, third parties, whatever. They need to take all this content and process, let's say, to be ready to be available in all the TVs. If we are talking about a national TV channel, all the TVs in the country are, must receive this uh, signal. So this is made through a distribution network. Signal, it's processed and then delivered to the whole country through this distribution network. Okay? And HPV TV relies in the digital video broadcast standard. There are three different frameworks, satellite, terrestrial, and cable. We will focus, as we are talking about the smart TVs at home, we will focus just in the terrestrial one, DVVT. I don't know why, but in Spain we like to rename things with a different name. So we rename this as DVT. 
uh, of course, if anyone is going to look any specification, it's nothing about TDT, it's DVD, terrestrial DVD. Uh, they are using uh, these parameters, they are very low parameters. Each country could uh, have different implementations, there are different modulations, different bandwidths, different uh, car interval, and, and so on. But I just want uh, to make sure that all these uh, parameters will be in account for later configurations. And if you have been playing around with RTLSDR, it's really nice that they are that somehow they are related in history. When I started to play with RTLSDR, uh, of course I think all of us we are doing with spectrum analysis and there is a maximum of this sample rate. We can not uh, go in below 2.4 megasamples per second. It's supposed that some people achieve a higher value three, but wait a, wait a minute. I just told you that the channel bandwidth is 8 megahertz. How these devices are able to treat 8 megahertz channel bandwidth but when I, we want to play with them, there is only two mega samples per second, or two mega. It's the same. Why is one like what? Why because of that? So, in order to understand that, I want to show you this again. It's a simplification of the DVD-T receiver diagram. There are two main uh, elements. The tanner is the first element that will take data from the analog to digital conversor. When you, you look on the internet for these RTL SDR devices, I'm sure you will realize there are different tunnels, Raphael 820 or Elonix 8000, uh, sorry, E4000. This is the tunnel where we select our frequency. And we'll give this frequency to the next element is the demodulator. And Eric Fry in 2010 realized that if we change this device driver, we are able to bypass the hardware demodulator. Hardware demodulator is able to treat this 8 mega signal and of course the demodulate generating this MPEG2 transport steam signal that finally will be the multiplex into audio video metadata if what we are wondering is to watch TV. But they find out that changing the drivers, we are able to bypass this hardware demodulator and the real tech the RTL2832, it's able to give us raw IQ sample. This is what we are using. And because of this uh, different engineering mode, let's call this our secret mode or user mode, the chipset is not going to give us any more 8 megahertz bandwidth. This is this uh, kind of limit between 2.4 and 3.2 megasamples per second coming from. If you focus in the, the modulator, this is a, a standard diagram of the, all the elements in charge of the signal in order to give us an MPEG2 transport stream. And we are going, we would like to do that by our own in our computer using Genio Radio. That's what Bogdan Diakonescu created in 2013 in his project here, DVDT. After two years, I think 2015, he donates this project to the GNU Radio project under the tier DTV. Much more, it's not just a DVD, there are much more digital television standards we can receive and transmit. So, uh, also, there is also, sorry, Ron Economos, he creates DTV utils. With these utils, we are able to transmit DVD with our blade array. And it's really easy to adapt these scripts to use another kind of SDR, generic SDR, like HackRef, like there, and so on. So all the parameters, if you remember at the beginning of the DVD-T, Spanish DVD-T, in this case, we need to configure all these workflows. It's not just a standard plug and play that will run the GNU radio diagram and we will see television in our computer. We need to adapt these scripts with our implementation, our country implementation of this terrestrial television. We are finishing this introduction, it's just to let uh, these elements and come on. What is this multiplex? We are talking about digital television. The, what changed from analog, the previous one, is if you realize in these frequencies, when you take your channels list, there are a lot of different channels and stations sharing the same frequency because they are multiplexing. In the same signal, if you, if you use hacker F and we tune into this uh, single's frequency, we will see just a bunch of 8 megahertz signal. And inside, there are the different channels and stations multiplexing. That's what it doesn't mean. 
if uh, we use the HackRef suite utility, this very nice view of the whole TV spectrum, we can take the whole 400 megahertz, and we don't need anymore to go to these quick pages where we are, have listed uh, the TV stations and frequency that is always an nightmare. A lot of the different uh, TV manufacturers have problems with these channels. The lower ones or the higher ones frequency, most of the times they don't uh, have problems, sorry. To tune. It's a different way to see all these channels in the same time. The same could be achieved using the RTL SDR. If you know this utility, the RTL underscore power, will generate a CSV file and uh, using a Python utility, we can transform into a nice image like this one. So it's the same. Same different, sorry, the only difference is the HackerF is real time and uh, RTL needs to treat this information offline. But we will generate a nice view of the whole TV spectrum and we will find out who is transmitting and the frequencies. Uh, let me finish with this uh, uh, background of hijacking. When we want to do a channel injection or a hijack television, we look uh, backward to the history. There are two uh, nice uh, <laughs> occasions in the past, in 1986 and 1987. Captain Midnight and Max Headroom. Let's check it from the Wikipedia, of course. These two uh, real cases of TV channel hijacking were in the United States. One in, the first one is, was a satellite signal being uh, impersonated, and the 1987 was uh, two, uh, two different interruptions with a man with this mask uh, singing and doing strange things. Also in the Lebanon in 2006, uh, anti Hezbollah propaganda was being used to, well, impersonate. And if we focus in the smart TVs, what's going on so far? Probably you will remember Weeping Angels, CIA, WikiLeaks, that uh, we can turn Samsung smart TV into a microphone, but this attack requires local access in order to do this exploitation. 2015, uh, theoretical attacks about this uh, hijacking uh, start to grow, and two years ago, Rafael Shim in 2017, hacking smart TV presentation, so how to exploit two different vulnerabilities of two different Samsung smart TVs. Uh, I think one was JavaScript and flash video vulnerabilities, but he uses a real, was not a SDR, was a proprietary uh, transceiver to transmit his uh, signal, his poison signal, let's call this, using a Windows software, everything proprietary. That was one of my main motivations to create this. I'm not focusing my work, my research in manufacturers, specific manufacturers, manufacturers sorry, or zero day, but to create an open source methodology so we can play with our SDR devices, any of them, not just one manufacturer, HackRef, LabRef, whatever, with open source softwares in order to research our smart TVs vulnerabilities. So, Let's move forward with our first attack, the channel injection. What we would like to do now is to transmit our own TV signal. So we are going to impersonate with our uh, equipment, with our laptop, the whole TV network. We will transmit with our SDR device. We can transmit using radio or we can transmit using the wire. Okay? How we achieve this, how we accomplish this mission? We need to take our poison video file and we need to put some ingredients because the video file needs to add some parameters, some metadata in order for the television, uh, the modulator to take this signal as a valid one. Once we forge this uh, valid transport stream, we will broadcast the transport stream with the GRTTV utility and of course we will be on air. In order to take this or generate this transport stream video, this poison file, we could use, as we are just talking about a video or channel injection, we can use a very simple attack using FFMPG. We could take any video file with any codec and output into a transport stream and put all the parameters you have uh, below network ID and stream, sorry, ID, service ID, and so on. We need to take this exactly the same parameters as the valid channel where we want to replace or to impersonate. 
or we can use OpenCaster. OpenCaster is much more complicated. It's not a common line. It's a Python script, but we have all the parameters. Later on, for the URL injection attack, we will need OpenCaster. <laughs> Again, we need to modify all these four parameters. And how to take these parameters when we face our face, our first sorry project? We don't know these parameter values. But using Caffeine, for example, a nice desktop uh, utility to watch TV on Linux, double clicking on uh, the channel station will come up this small window and will show up not only the frequency but the network ID, stream ID, all the parameters we need to impersonate are there. If we don't like, you don't like desktop or graphical utilities, we can use the VV5 scan inside the VV5 tools. It's just command line and will create a text file with once per uh, channel and all the parameters inside. So it's really easy. We take all these parameters, we forge our own transport stream. And that's the original television antenna, the white one, Blade RF, you see a small antenna. I'm ready, it's not still uh, transmitting, it's waiting. We so saw we're watching TV, Spanish 24-hour uh, news channel. So, we will start transmission. Pedro on air. Here we are, injecting our own channel. Once we stop the attack, the original channel we came back because we are impersonating, impersonating sorry, the same parameters. So we could do a, a persistent attack or just a quick attack to uh, I don't know to uh, show our neighbors or fathers or family whatever some kidding. But what if we want not just attack? That this is the most simple attack. But thinking about how these antennas distribution uh, is not a network, but how antenna distribution works, we could think because radio uh, sometimes is complicated and expensive. You want to attack some uh, distant uh, house or whatever, we need to add on top of this uh, blade red power amplifiers, filter, directional antenna, and this is going to be a cause. But sometimes it's much more easier to identify our antenna facility. Antenna facilities distribute the signals once it's been received from the antenna through the hall. Think about a huge building. There's only one or two antennas on the floor, and they are distributing the same, distributing an amplifier, the same signal through the whole building or residential area. So we can punch on all the residential area or our target. In order to do that, we need to study how this uh, antenna facility is being designed. Usually, this is the most simple and easy one. We see two wires coming from the top. They are the terrestrial and satellite antenna. And there, it's been split into three outputs, one per each house. More complex uh, uh, facilities has a huge uh, amplifiers because in this case, this is a big residential area and antenna facility was really outside in a huge tower. So they need to amplify a signal coming from the antenna and then it's being divided with these two splitters. This is a cascade installation. This splitter, they are each module of the residential uh, area has its own different model with again, new amplifier and new splitter. If we realize the attack, sorry, if we design, if we inject our channel at the beginning, we will poison the whole residential area. If we poison our signal uh, in the house that we want to attack, we are just attacking one house. I want to show you how we can do that. This is a very small installation. There are just two televisions, but it's really Sorry. Here we are. Yes. There are two televisions. I'm removing the original wire coming from the roof with the original antenna, so signal will go out. We will lose the signal. You will see that televisions treat this uh, event in different way. Showing Blade RF is already transmitting. Oh, no, 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 sorry, it's not already. I'm just going to plug our poison signal. And now we are transmitting with the year 
DTV util, sorry. Here I am. First one is receiving my signal. I don't know why it's first of all and the second, but they are synchronized in your eyes. Even if one takes more time, they are uh, doing this demodulation process not at the same speed, but I will remove again the wire and when the original signal came, both of these two televisions will be again synchronized the content. I want just to show you that this is not uh, Photoshop or video editing uh, proof of concept that the signal came at the same time, proving that we can attack more than one television in one attack. And of course, we are always talking about drone attacks. It's really uh, easy to attack an antenna if we are using a drone because we can hover in the antenna facility and we don't need to get inside the building and get uh, access to the building or whatever. So I want to test how easy it is to rent a drone because I don't want to use my drone for that. <laughs> Who knows? And I have a very huge uh, problem. I really don't know the amount, how much weight can carry one of these commercial drones. This drone is a Phantom 3 or Phantom 4 they are not manufactured to carry any load. So there is no specification from the manufacturer about the amount of weight they are able to carry. But we have a lot of the videos on YouTube of crazy people taking these buckets full of water with a rope and they start to fly and they are measuring uh, 500 grams, one kilograms. They are really crazy. So after seeing a lot of these crazy videos and finding this web page, I get myself a limit, 300 grams. That was the weight I need for my payload. And that fits perfectly with a Hackref, a power bank, and the Android C2. It was, not, uh, it was for me impossible to do this attack with a Raspberry P3. I, I already tried maybe a lot of times, but doesn't have computational resources enough to do our transmission constantly in time and we want our big team to really realize and see our video. So I'm using an Audro AC2 and all of this setup is just 300 grams. So we need to do this design to be really stick and not to move in the drone. For the dynamics flight, if we are flying with the components moving, our gravity center is going to be moving and for sure the drone is going to finish on the floor and crashing. So, Take these three elements and stick them very good, adapt our scripts because the Android C2 is not able to generate content in real time. Everything is doing the Android is transmitting the already poison video generated in another computer. And after a few days working, I think it should be sound in this video. It's my favorite one, sorry. Here we are, getting ready for the fly, touching everything. You will see, now I'm going to use a lot of cameras to show this demonstration. We are recording from another drone, Maui, you will see in the video. This uh, bottom left screen is mobile. It's going to get into the house. It will be recording the television for you. You will see how they attack all the stages. As much as I'm getting close to the antenna, my proxy signal is going to impersonate the original channel. This video is for the Maverick. just a third in the attack, it's a practical attack. And let me just uh, sum up, because these three videos are just proof of concept. I don't have any uh, governmental or uh, private company support in order to demonstrate that these videos or these attacks could be done much wider, not just focusing on one smart TV. Because of these uh, television networks, uh, they are designed, and there are a lot of elements from the head, if you remember at the beginning, 
the heaven, once you generate this uh, transport stream, it's been distributed in a very stupid way. They trust each other. So if we inject this uh, poison video, but not in our house, if we are able to inject in the main head end, we will inject this video to the whole country. Of course, they need insider, uh, not a uh, attack, but they, we need uh, some uh, deep internal network knowledge or uh, someone inside of this company that help us to carry on with this attack if we want to use the head end. Transmitter centers, they are more, much more easier because they are not, there's no one uh, national one, they are a lot of transmitter center primary ones. And my favorite ones, they are the gap feeder. Gap filler is a very stupid repeater. They have two antennas. One antenna receives television, receives, sorry, the original signal, and amplifies this signal towards this shadow area. So if we take the same drone, and we do realize the same attack, and instead of hovering the antenna, we hover over the gap filler, our signal is going to be transmitted to all this area. It's a very nice attack, but of course, in order to demonstrate, we need uh, some permission and some, someone that help us in order to do these videos that I don't have. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Okay, we show, I show you how to inject uh, just video. This is the, the, the most uh, funniest attacks. But as we mentioned at the beginning, HPBTB uses a um, URL. If we uh, do a, a ARP poison attack to our smart TV, we will see that every five seconds, five or one to three seconds, the smart TV is sending this get HTTP get request to those servers. If you realize they are just web servers. I don't know why they like to put this HPBTV.s at the domain name, but anyway, they are the standard web servers. I think this is the way they are measuring our uh, audience, our, which channels we are watching everyone. This is not an attack, just I want to show you because this is European, how this is worth the Euralized television itself. I'm just starting the ARP poison attack. I will put on TV and show you how these channels are every yes, two seconds, three seconds with this. These are the original, the legit, legit sorry, HTTP request. La Uno, this is the main national TV channel in Spain. Under we are with this, uh, I don't know what they call this application, Red Button. This is the HBB, HBB TV, sorry, application called Red Button. This is how it should work. And what we want to do right now, we are not taking care of the media file. What we want to take care of now is uh, metadata. A new, a new parameter, the URL. And now, probably, we don't want to inject video. If, if you think about this attack, I want my victim not to be realized that he's under attack. He will continue watching the original TV, we will do a video replay. He will get the original video of the original channel, because we are going to use another SDR to take the original video, and we will inject this original video. It's not being modified, but the attacking will be, the attack, sorry, will be in the URL. We will poison only the URL, maintaining only the original video. That can all be done using OpenCaster. We need to replicate some kind of uh, reverse engineering, because we need to maintain all the original parameters of our this uh, TV channel or TV station, and only thing, the only thing we need to modify is these three parameters of the applications: name, root, and path. And let me show you that inside the smart TV there are two browsers: the HBB TV browser, it's totally transparent for the user, and the user browser for sure. The user could open a huge or fancy. A browser in order to read this paper or whatever. So each attack or the attacks I'm going to show you could be modified or varied. We want to attack HBB TV browser or the user browser. We know which browser we are attacking because of the user agent. One, we have this get request in our poison or a web server taking care of the or taking a look, sorry, of the user agent. If you realize, for the Samsung TV, the first one is HPV TV 1.2.1. 1 
meaning that we are talking to the HPV TV browser. And the black one, the Mozilla, is the user browser. Both of them leak very important information about manufacturer and model. What does it mean that we can scan smart TVs remotely if we just are listening for this URL, URL sorry, with our fake transmission? We are able to scan for smart TV, public IP addresses, model and manufacturers, and the channel, because we could use a different URL per channel. Let me show you, because there is a lot of uh, information, let me show you. I'm going to use four terminals. In the upper left is the DVDV sub. We'll just use our uh, RTL SDR to tune the original channel. With the DVD snoop, I want to take this uh, original video and put it into our transport stream file. With the bottom left, <laughs> DSCB air maxer, I will poison only the URL. I will maintain all the parameters, but I will just modify the URL. And finally, with the GR DVD, I will transmit this poison signal to our victim. That's again the same white antenna. This is the second SDR, this is a NOELEC, very tiny SDR device with the original antenna. Laptop is ready for the DAC, it's not yet doing anything, it's just being ready. And television. There is no URL, sorry for this, because it's really complicated to record and to be doing all the rest of the stuff. I will now start to tune the small LTLSDR device. I'm tuning the television. I will start to record to a file, transport the stream file. A few seconds of uh, buffer, let's call this like a buffer. And now we are modifying, I am injecting the URL and now I am transmitting. You don't see any difference because I'm using the same video. But now, DEFCON 27 index 4, this is my personal URL. Now I can scan your smart TV. I could be able to take your manufacturer, model, and public IP addresses. As I am attacking all of these TV channels multiplexes, if the user does something and change to another channel, we will continue scanning his preferences of channel. <laughs> An audience. I'm very bad with this uh, sapping uh, process, but uh, index two, if you realize, I will pause the video. The upper request is uh, DEFCON 27 index four, and below request is uh, index 27 index, sorry, DEFCON 27 index two. That's how we can scan or poison different channels. Now that we are able, thank you very much. If we think all the options that we have, not that we are able to forge and use our own web server to attack our victims, I think that after so many years playing around with these uh, web pages, captive web pages, I think about, of course, social engineering. We could create an advanced exploit in order to take the Wi-Fi information from the smart TV, because, of course, smart TV is connected to the Wi-Fi. But why not just ask our victim, that's in this, hey, guy, I am your smart TV, I just been upgraded, I really would like to confirm with you your Wi-Fi network. Could you be so kind, please, to let me know? Sorry. Uh, here we are. Could you be so kind to let me know what's your Wi-Fi? Pigma theory. <laughs> okay. I will use a text file. It's empty. I will store the Wi-Fi answer of our attendee of our audience. This text file. We are transmitting now our picture URL. Television is start to render. Dear user, has been successfully upgraded. As we have been scanning, we can create a really nice captive web page with our manufacturer image. And of course, this is just a proof of concept and I will publish for you. So I don't want to give you a real uh, 
let's say, social engineering. And when he typed the Wi-Fi, we have the user input. Once he accept, uh, he just second try. He some random characters is to show you this proof of concept. It's an O's. Once the user accept, if we check this text file content has user input. This allows is not insert because this is just a stupid web server if you realize. This is the powerful of this methodology. We could create very creative attacks towards the final user of the smart TV. Same with the key login. That doesn't make sense in the HPPTV browser because the HPPTV browser is a passive. That makes sense only with the user browser. And same with the crypto mining attacks. Think about if we are able to inject this crypto mining JavaScript in, I don't know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of smart TVs, they will be so kind as to do this crypto mining for us. Maybe we are retiring in two days, I don't know. I really would like. But as you know, this is uh, Monero con high from Monero, and they uh, stopped the service, I think, March this year. It's really a pity. Let me show you. Uh, the difficult uh, side here, if you are been playing with this uh, Monero con high, is the auto start feature. You don't want the user to press the button start, to start mining, right? You want this to be an automatically attack. Uh, long time ago, the auto start feature was uh, publicly available to everyone to modify. But of course, as this uh, was used in a lot of web pages, uh, ideally, or to do some this kind of attacks, uh, can I uh, remove the auto start feature and force the user to do uh, this uh, manual start? So, uh, an anonymous uh, friend let me the original JavaScript code, so I don't. Uh, we don't need the auto start uh, press. It will start automatically this crypto uh, mining. Once we change uh, the channel to take this uh, poison URL. I'm using this uh, small square. We are in URLize. The second request is the JavaScript. We inject the JavaScript file, the sex that slash simple ue mean.js. This is the small JavaScript file in order to start mining. So I will start in the Wireshark. I will change the filter to show you the high IP address. Everything was under HTTPS, so we don't know, we don't have the, the HTTP records, but we will see all the HTTPS communications from the smart TV towards the CoinHive web servers mining. And uh, also I was wondering what else we could uh, do with our smart TV, the browser. We would like to face the user browser. If you remember Beef application, Beef uh, software, to hook browsers. I want to use an uh, NG, I, I love this utility Ethercup from uh, Socket Evil. NG uh, Ethercup will be in charge of inject this uh, hook.javascript uh, file to hook the user browser. When I hook the user browser, I will use Beef just as a very simple application to create an invisible frame. And what for? We will have Metasploit running with the auto pump. And of course, in this invisible frame, we're going to Smart TV to listen to Metasploit auto pump. In that moment, Metasploit will be scanned for vulnerabilities in our Smart TV browser. And here we are. Everything is ready. I want to show you the Evercap JavaScript file. Everything we need to modify here is uh, the URL of our hook.js uh, hook, let's say JavaScript file. Of course, it's locally. Evercap is ready. Beef is already being started. I'm listening to any browser being compromised. And now the user will open his favorite newspaper. 
Por vestirse del camisel, que es una de las pichos políticas antirrepresivas que se pueden dar a terme. Y de poder recuperar el gobierno de la sanidad para poder avanzar y tornar a caminar. Y en un pleno lleno de reproches y advertencias. Ustedes lo único que quieren es alargar el proceso. As you see below, new hooked browser ID, blah, 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 browser or now hooked domain, El Mundo.es is the newspaper. We have hooked the browser now. If you move to Metsploit, copy the URL created for the Autobahn. Here we are with the beef, modules, invisible frame. A widget. And there it is, Autobahn running. You can check all of the models are looking for vulnerabilities in the Smart TV user browser. Thank you. It's uh, real easy to conclude this first conclusion. Probably you are aware that uh, the principle of this attack is the lack of authentication in the radio ledger. There is no authentication at all. This vulnerability or this flag of design is uh, also the same for the GPS. You could create with SDR device our own GPS constellation. No of the GPS clients will try to authenticate ourselves. And same for the network, for the mobile networks. Probably you are aware that 3G and 4G mobile fake mobile networks, at some stage of the process, they will do a mutual authentication. But does this mutual authentication take place after the identification? We still nowadays have 3G MC cultures and 4G MC cultures. And the base of this attack is because the mobile device is unable to authenticate this signal. They will always pick the best signal, the stronger one. That's it. It's the same basic of these attacks. So probably it's time in order to implement some kind of authentication in the lower levels. And on the other hand, when we uh, always go to buy a smart TV, I think, I don't know the percentage, but probably 99% of us, we are just concerned about size, inches. The amount of inches of our smart TV, bigger, lower, that's everything that we care about the smart TV. But probably after seeing these uh, attacks, Probably it's time to think about, same as smartphones, about security, about the operating system underlying our, our smart TV. I want to have a smart TV that uh, from time to time patches all these vulnerabilities and take a secure browser, not any browser from, I don't know where, in, in time or in place. I want uh, some operating system taking care of security if I want to connect my smart TV to the internet <laughs> that they will not recommend to anyone. So thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Gonzalo, Pepe, Alvaro and Nob that they helped me a lot with this uh, research. To record these videos was not been easy at all. Uh, of course, I want to thank all of you to be here with me today. Thank you very much. Subscribe, like and share if you enjoyed this video or learned something and comment below what you found interesting. Not a tag that we need uh, some uh, deep internal network knowledge or uh, someone inside of this company will help us. I don't know what to record this video. Uh, but the center, there are more pieces that they have not Holy but Jesus, did this goon just call me unprofessional? Wow.